Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on linear motion. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a question I left you guys with in the previous video. Hope you had time to look at it. Let's look at it. Let's try to go through the question and let's see how we are supposed to work it out. So the question reads, a truck traveling at 22.5 meters per second generally decelerates at 2.27 meters per second squared. How much time does it take for the car for the truck to stop? Let's go through that. A truck traveling at 22.5 meters per second decelerates at 2.27 meters per second squared. How much time does it take for the truck to stop? Okay. So here, what we're seeing is that we have a truck that has an initial velocity of 22.5 meters per second. And we are told that this truck decelerates at a constant in deceleration. And this deceleration is given 2.27 meters per second. What they want us to do is, they want us to find how much time it takes for the truck to stop. Okay, so let's see. What are the facts given in the question here? So since we know what we're, what we're trying to find, we're trying to find the time, the time it takes the truck to stop. If it's going to stop, then the final velocity has to be zero since it's coming to a stop. The final velocity has to be zero. And apart from this, the question does give us the starting velocity. This truck is moving at a given velocity, 22.5 meters per second. So that is the starting velocity, 22.5 meters per second. And apart from that, we're being told that it decelerates. The deceleration is just the acceleration. But keep in mind one thing, deceleration is just negative acceleration. So even though this value here is given as 2.27 meters per second squared, the fact that they're saying decelerates at, it means that this is actually a negative value. So this is acceleration but it is negative 2.27 meters per second squared. So I hope you were able to pick that up. So it is deceleration, but it's negative 2.27 meters per second squared. Okay, what else do they want? What else have they given us? I think that's everything. So they want us to find how long it takes to change the velocity from 22.5 to zero. Okay, so with that done, how do we work out this particular question? Well, this is linear motion. You have to keep in mind the equations that are at your disposal. These equations are V is equal to U plus AT, and then VS is equal to UT plus half AT squared, and lastly, V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. In most cases, I use these three equations and they always give me the answer. Never had a, a, a question where these three equations were, uh, were out of their depth. In most cases, these equations will get you out of any study situation. So mostly in the exam, these equations will be given to you sometimes, in most exams anyway. But in tests, in some cases, these equations will not be given to you. So it is, it, you might want to just know them about all. It might be convenient for you to always flip to the back page for you to just check an equation. If you can remember them, I'll ask you guys to just try to remember them. Again, V here represents the final velocity. U represents the initial velocity. A is the acceleration. T is the time taken. S is the displacement of this particular object. Okay, so for our problem here, we're trying to find how long it takes for the truck to stop. So when you look at what you are given or what we are given here, we quickly notice that there's no mention of the displacement. Because of that, we might not want to use any equation that has displacement because it is not given to us. So it would be a big hassle if we picked an equation that has displacement. When displacement has not been given, would be forced first to find the displacement, which we might not want to do. So we want to use an equation that doesn't have displacement, which leaves us with the first equation. Well, let's see if that first equation is helpful. V is equals to U plus AT. Now, when you look at it, this equation does have what we're looking for. 
we are given the acceleration, we are given the initial and the final velocity. So this equation actually works well. So let's quickly make final, uh, the time subject of the formula. So we have V minus U equal to a t. So here we're seeing that t is equal to V minus U over the acceleration. And if we work it out, final velocity is zero. Initial velocity, 22.5 divided by the time, the acceleration I mean, which is negative 2.27. That is our acceleration. And if you work it out, notice that the value comes out correctly as 9.91 seconds as our time, okay? So having found our time, we'll quickly move on to look at the second part of the question. <clears throat> okay. In the second part, they are asking us, how far does it travel while stopping? So you see here now, the fact that they're saying how far, we're talking about distance. So while it was stopping, how far did it move? So here, we can literally use an equation, but we're looking for how far. So we're looking for displacement. So even though, or even as we write down our equations, we want to keep in mind that we're looking for displacement in this case. So we want to use an equation that has displacement. V squared is equals to U squared plus two AS. So you want to use an equation that has displacement since you want to find displacement. Meaning for this question, the first equation will not help us because it doesn't have displacement. So you can use the, the second or the third. For some reason, I always fancy the third equation because it doesn't, doesn't just looks a little bit easier than the, than the second one. So in this case, both equations can work. So I'm going to pick the third equation, but the second one will work just fine. Okay, so what we have, we have V squared is equals to U squared plus two AS. I want to find my S. So I'll make S subject the formula. I have V squared minus U squared is equal to two AS. Divide both sides by two A. I'll have, this is U squared. I have S is equal to V squared minus U squared over two A. The next part is substitution. My final velocity, the question is saying, how far does it, does it go while stopping? So it's again, wants to break the final velocity of zero minus the starting velocity. It's that 22.5, but remember it has to be squared over two times the acceleration. It's still a deceleration, negative 2.27. So if you work this one out, you should be able to get 112 meters as the distance it moves while stopping. Okay, lastly, why are they asking us, how far does it travel during the, set, the third second? Well, this is just a little bit of wordplay there. They want how far it travels during the third second. So the thing that you have to just maybe uh, ask yourself or try to convince yourself on is what the third second is all about. So let me just draw the time axis. Let me just say this is the horizontal axis and we have time. We're starting from here, zero, and then we have one, we have two and we have three. So this, and then let's say we have four. Most, some students, not most, some students will struggle to identify which represents the third second. Now, what I want you guys to just keep in mind here is that when time starts counting from zero, coming up to one, this is the first second. And as time changes from one coming to two, this is the second second. And as time changes from two to three, this is the third second. And here, of course, this is, you guessed it right, this is the fourth second. Our question is asking us about what is happening during the third second, not there, 
it's here. The third second is as time changes from two seconds to three seconds. So how do we get the distance moved as time changed from two to three seconds? Well, we're going to use one simple trick. We're going to find the distance it covers in the first two seconds. And then we're going to also find the distance it moves in the in the, in the three in the in three seconds. If we know the distance it moves in two seconds, in the first two seconds, and the distance it moves in the first three seconds, the difference between them will be the distance moved in the third second. So I hope you're getting my point. We'll get the distance it moves in the first second, and then we'll get the distance it moves in the third, uh, not in the, in, the, in the second. We'll get the distance it moves during the first two seconds, and then we'll get the distance it moves during the first three seconds. The difference between them will be the distance it moves during the third second. So that is the logic we're going to use. So let's look at it. In the first, in the first two seconds, what is happening? How, what's the distance it moves during the first two seconds? So in the first two seconds, the initial velocity is that 22.5. We don't know what the final velocity is, We're not even interested in it for now. You can find it and uh, take that route if you want, but I think I won't try to find the final velocity. But since we're in the first two seconds, the time is equals to two seconds. And apart from this, the acceleration here is still that retardation. So it's negative 2.27. Of course, the unit is meters per second squared. Then this is meters per second. OK, so with this in mind, we can try to get how far it goes during the first two seconds. So because I'm not seeing any mention of time here, my equation can be the second equation um, no, not time, of the final velocity. Since we're not interested in the final velocity, we'll use the second equation since it doesn't have final velocity. So here we have S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. This is during the second, uh, not during the second, during the first two seconds. So the distance moved in the first two seconds, the initial velocity, 22.5 times two seconds plus one over two, times negative two point the acceleration two seven and then time which is two squared that's in the first in the first two seconds if you simplify this you should be able to get the distance it moves in the first two seconds as 40 40 point five meters so in the first two seconds that's the distance that this track covers next up we get the distance it covers or the distance it moves in three seconds, in the first three seconds. So in the first three seconds, what happens there? Well, in the first three seconds, again, we're still starting from rest, not from rest, from that U is equals to 22.5 seconds. The acceleration is to that deceleration that negative 2.27 meters per second squared, or well, this is an initial velocity, so it's meters per second. And then the time it takes, now we are in the first three seconds, so the time is three seconds. Again, we want to find how far it goes in the first three seconds. So again, we, we see that we, there is, we're not interested in the final velocity, so because of that, because we're not interested in the final velocity, we, um, we, we kind of want to ignore that final velocity and use an equation that doesn't use final velocity. So again, we'll go back to this equation, ut plus half at squared. With this done, we can make the substitution. Initial velocity, 22.5. Time, now it's three seconds plus half times negative 2.27 times three squared, the time squared. 
If we work this one out, we see that the distance it moves in the first three seconds will be 57.3 meters. Now, once we found this, now again, notice, notice what is happening here. Once we found this, to get the distance it moves in the first, in the third second only, because what we got in the first two seconds, we've seen that it moves 40.5. In the first three seconds from here up to there, we've seen that it moves 57.3 meters. So in the third second only, what we should see is we have to get the difference between this point and that point. That will give us what happens only in the third second. So in other words, to get the distance in the third second, to get that distance, all we have to do is get the difference there, 57.3 minus 40, 0.5. And if you perform the math there, you should get 16.8 meters. So this is how far it moves in the third second. Okay. I hope you guys were able to follow through this um, this description. It's kind of a little bit a little bit long, but I hope you are able to follow through to the very end. Okay. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial. We have another interesting question to look at. Yeah, so you guys can actually take a look at it in advance. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial. This was your tutor.